about 4.45 in the morning and I am headed out on my first ever solo trip and solo road trip. I'm nervous, but I'm very excited, so let's go. On June 13th, I headed out on my first ever solo road trip. I made the 12 hour drive to Luray, Virginia to see my best friend who works as a park ranger at Shenandoah National Park. This trip was a big deal for so many reasons. The main one, of course, being that I was so thrilled to be able to see my best bud in person again. She's been my best friend since we were 11 years old, and we have the kind of friendship that no matter how much time passes, our relationship never changes. But that doesn't make it less exciting to actually get together in person, especially after going so long without seeing each other during the pandemic. The other reason that this trip was such a big deal was the fact that I made this journey on my own. And that is a big deal for me, because just a few years ago, I wouldn't have felt that I was capable of doing such a thing. I've struggled with severe anxiety for a large portion of my adult life, and for a while it crippled my ability to function and enjoy things for way too long before I finally sought help. I won't go into detail in this video since that whole subject is a video in itself, but after a couple years of intense therapy, I finally felt like I was able to do things in my life, and this trip was a massive test of that. And I'm thrilled to say it was also a massive success. I stayed with my friend in the town of Luray, Virginia, which is a pretty cute little place. It's packed with a lot of classic small town America charm. They have a little river walk in town, a very cute downtown area with cozy shops and such, and lots of friendly neighborhood kitties. There's also lots of wildlife too. Actually, one of the things I was so surprised and excited by was rabbits. They have the cutest little buns just chilling all around town in the main areas, residential areas. I've never seen so many wild rabbits ever, let alone where people are. It was great. We took a little bird watching walk. Uh, my friend is a super bird nerd and she has so much knowledge about birds. And she showed me the nesting black crown night herons, which have taken over a few trees in the town for their nests. It was super rad. I also couldn't help but spy on some ducks with my binoculars. I also love that Luray is surrounded by gorgeous views of the Shenandoah mountains. It makes for such a great backdrop to a cute little town. Of my three full days there, we spent most of it in Shenandoah National Park. We of course did a good bit of hiking. My friend took me on what she dubbed as the sampler pack of Shenandoah, and I think that's a perfect description. We did a lot of shorter hikes to see a bit more of the park and forest and views, as opposed to big long day hikes to one spot. 
This was also good for me since, to be honest, I'm not in the best of shape and I wasn't sure how well I'd hold up for huge day-long hikes. We hiked to so many beautiful spots with view payoffs that were totally awe-inspiring. 360 degree views where you can see hundreds of miles into the distance, it was incredible. And while the views were of course completely mind-blowing, I find the hikes themselves to be full of so much beauty. Getting away from the day-to-day -day and reconnecting in nature always leaves me feeling so refreshed and always with an ever-renewed sense of awe for this planet. There is so much natural beauty around us and it's something that I never want to take for granted and always want to appreciate and admire. The simple joy of just walking through such a beautiful landscape is something I will never tire of. Being in the woods is so peaceful and serene. Listening to all of the sounds that surround you and taking in the beauty of the forest. I feel like every part has beauty to it, from the tall trees with sun shining through the leaves to the small critters you can spot on the trail. One of our hikes took us to Dark Hollow Falls, one of the more popular spots in Shenandoah, and I can absolutely see why. It's a four-tier waterfall that cascades down through the middle of the forest, and it was stunning to take in. But beyond the falls itself, the hike was one of my most favorites of the trip. It felt almost whimsical, like I'd traveled Narnia style into a cottage core paradise. It was one of the busier trails we took, but it was no less magical because of that. I hope that the footage I've captured can even give you a fraction of the beauty that is being up in these mountains. There's just so much accessible beauty here. Even just driving along the Skyline Drive, there is beauty everywhere to take in. It's one of the things that really struck me about this park is that you don't have to be physically able to hike up a mountain to experience these awe-inspiring views. Along the Skyline Drive, there are miles and miles of stunning views that are accessible just by driving up and parking your car. best parts of the Shenandoah sampler pack was that it left us time in our day to relax and enjoy some good old-fashioned friend time. On my second day there, we got some amazing Indian takeout from the small local place, and each day had plenty of chill time in the afternoons to relax and play some board games, something we both love. And luckily, my friend is as into weird things as I am and was thrilled to go on a pharaoh cicada quest. We both really wanted to locate some cicadas and hopefully find some husks and wings to collect as well, and we hit pay dirt.
I do want to note that we did not find or take any of these out of the national park itself. That's super illegal, so don't do that. We went to a town outside of the park that we'd heard from some of her ranger friends that had cicadas. And after sorting our treasures, we had some arts and crafts time. I worked on some cicada studies in my sketchbook, and I did some other insect studies from photos I took on our hikes. My friend took some of her cicada wings and made some rad bookmarks. I brought my cicada treasures home and planned to use them in resin projects. In addition to the insect sketches, I also did another page of studies from Luray Caverns, which might be one of the coolest things I've ever seen in real life. I have the words to describe just how incredible going through the Ray Caverns was. The formations you're surrounded by are completely otherworldly. The patterns and textures they form are like nothing I've ever seen in person before. This underground world is so completely alien compared to the surface that we live on that it almost feels fake, like you accidentally wandered onto an elaborate movie set. It's completely surreal to walk through these caverns knowing that above you, people are just going on with their daily lives and all of this lies below them. The scope of this place was also something that I found breathtaking. It is absolutely gigantic, which I know the footage doesn't really show all that well. And it's not just the size, but the realization of how long it takes for formations like this to form, and just how long these caverns have been here. This trip was such a beautiful experience. Aside from the stunning physical landscape beauty, there was also that personal growth moment of, look what I can do. Look at all the possibilities there are for experiences to be had. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, a few years ago a trip like this would not have felt possible, and now I'd done it. I went out and experienced so many new things, and it was all so incredible. And that just makes me feel like, look, look how much more there is in the world that you get to go do now. Shenandoah was actually the first national park I've ever been to, and it sure didn't disappoint. I got a national park passport while at the park, and now have set a goal to visit all 63 national parks in my lifetime. One down. Traveling more was already something that I wanted to prioritize, and this trip only further confirmed that. I plan on returning to Shenandoah with my family in September, so they get to experience all that it has to offer as well. Thank you so much for watching today and coming along with me on my first ever solo trip. Be sure to like and subscribe, and comment below if you've ever taken a solo trip or you know any trip even if it wasn't by yourself and what your favorite parts were, I'd love to hear about it. I'll see you next week. Be well, everyone. Until next time.